Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Binding of Isaac Repentance, where today we're doing some challenges, starting off with challenge number 10, Cursed, where we see the entire map from the get-go. We have a lot of hearts, we have item rooms and shops, and we have the Curse of the Cursed, so every single room, more or less, except for the ones that don't are going to have curse room related flames or spikes on them rather so it's a little dangerous but simultaneously i'm not sure if i've ever failed this challenge so hopefully today is going to be another one of those days uh, we did start off with a rather powerful item in terms of offense we only need to go to mom's foot and we do have the yum heart available as well to deal with the damage we take. Obviously, it's not going to charge as quickly as we take damage, so we do need to have a little bit of luck in terms of how much uh, health we end up getting. But I would argue that this challenge has been made a little bit easier by the fact that most health up items actually heal you now, so hopefully it's not going to be too bad. But it's one of those things where it's just nice to get out of the way. It has a decent unlock, and all in all, I'm... Uh, Hoping for a rather simple run today, just to get stuff like this done. And yeah, the flames are doing large quantities of damage. That's not a health up, but it's a speed up. And also, I got a soul heart for killing the boss, so I can't really complain. We have to go to Mom's Foot, so it's not an especially long run either. And provided we don't get Curse of the Lost, which I'm not sure if it's possible to get, then we should be okay. It can be a little tempting not to go for item rooms, simply because it means that you uh, have to go through less rooms. But I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, really. I, I don't mind item rooms. Simultaneously, the flame alone makes me kind of confident enough to say that we're probably going to be okay. But that does help. <laughs> that does help a bit. It's a little bit of extra protection. And... I think um, one thing you can also do is do a different challenge first that gives Maggie a pill, um, which is always a full health pill, I believe. So I'm not sure which challenge that was exactly. I need to look that up, but that is actually um, a pretty nice thing to have, I suppose. At least I think it was a full health pill. I'm not sure now, but I feel like it was. I feel like it should be in any case, and if it's not, my apologies. Also, I should use the Yum Heart more often when I am one heart away from full health, or at least one heart, I suppose, because there is no reason not to. We are at least immune to explosions. If we can get Flight, I don't think that affects it, so probably doesn't matter too much, but Flight still helps out a little bit in the long run. It can make some of the rooms a little bit easier as well, so I'm definitely not opposed to Flight. Also, any just sort of weird explosive effects or something like that would be pretty fun as well, but... So far, things looking okay. Uh, blow, blighted Ovum. I feel like we just fought this boss, but I guess it was technically uh, Gemini or something like that. Just a boss that looks very, very similar, but not quite the same. Hoping to shoot a flame once my lifetime, but perhaps sometimes it is simply not to be. And we got another half heart for destroying the boss and another damage up. Uh, Devil deals I feel like are not going to be worthwhile. Unless there's solely black hearts inside. But I feel like that's a risk that I'm not going to bother to take. And instead I'll just stick with the angel rooms instead. Hopefully we can get those. Curse of the Labyrinth. That's actually not immediately terrible. Um, tempted not to go for one of the item rooms, I guess? Yeah, not sure what a good idea is here. If I could get one bomb, well, two bombs, I guess. That would be ideal, but I'm just gonna go for the item rooms anyway. Hopefully it's gonna work out. I, I have not planned this well enough. I'm hoping that Temperance Machine is also going to explode into Red Hearts once I destroy it. So for that alone, I would like to have a bomb, and we do have a bomb available now, so that's good. Uh, use that there. Also, any room where there's no enemies is actually a little bit more detrimental simply because you don't get extra charges on your Yum Heart as well. So, there is some danger to not being able to fight enemies here and there, which is a little unusual for sure. 
And hopefully these enemies will work with me a little bit here. The explosions don't matter too much. It's a little tempting to try and go for that heart, actually. Also, I don't have keys. I did not realize I was out of keys. Right. Okay, that's a bit of an issue. <laughs> um, so I'll just go in this direction then. Yeah, that's a problem that I can't really deal with unless I get a key right here. Because I'm not about to just walk back and forth here. At least we got one key. I have six coins, so I can at least play around with this a little bit. Uh, I don't love that. That's okay, actually, because that means that I get a couple extra bombs to work with. Got pretty much all my money back there as well, which is good. And we can go through the secret room to save a couple of hits here. And we can get a little bit more angel room chance by destroying the shopkeeper as well. So, all in all, not too bad. I'm hoping that one day we will once again see a flame. I need to make sure not to touch that champion because that is going to deal large quantities of damage to me and I cannot really deal with that. And two rooms away from being able to use our yum heart again, which is fine, but at least in a, on a positive note, we don't have to... Um, do another cave floor after this. After this, this is just um, gonna be the depths because of this Excel floor, so that's pretty good. We can get this black heart as well by making a bridge right here. And tempted to get the key as well, uh, even though it's not immediately ideal, I suppose, but it might end up working out. Either way, if we have some health to play with again, being able to use our yum heart there was pretty nice. And if we can get, like, batteries also would just be really nice as well, but given that the super secret room is very far away, I'm probably not going to get any batteries here anytime soon. I think I can probably just blow up the barrels here to create a bridge, right? Yeah. So that's a few extra coins. If we manage to get in range of a shop, then at least we can make use of that. And hopefully we can get a health up here. That is not a health up. That is going to be an orbital, which is not immediately terrible, but not immediately usable either. But at least our damage is so strong that we can kill these flies in one hit, which is pretty good. The fires do come out occasionally, plus the explosion isn't actually going to deal any damage to us, but there is the... Um, the creep to be wary of. There's a tinted rock right here, which because of the sap bombs I can actually get with two soul hearts inside. So that's obviously very good. And Gertie is not the scariest boss, especially when you the character decides to just not take any damage. I guess that's fine. Genuinely surprised it didn't there because in my eyes I was right in the middle of it all there, but I guess maybe I just either the host hat helped me there or my orbital. Or maybe I just happened to run through the middle by accident and it just happened to work out. But it was it was pretty damn close. I feel like that definitely should have hit me there, but I guess not. We still get perfection, interestingly enough, even though we are technically taking damage all over the place. But I guess because we haven't taken enemy damage yet, we're getting that. I will just stick with this, though, even though... Well, I'm basically just going to assume that the moment I walk through a curse room door, I'm, I'm going to lose this. But I'm not 100% sure about that. I'm actually going to test that real quick. Because if this doesn't... Okay, so you keep perfection. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I guess we're sticking with perfection. Even though having more red hearts drop is obviously very good. I'm just going to hope that we're going to be okay instead. Which is possibly not the best strat. I haven't taken enemy damage yet, which is uh, surprising, but also pretty great. And if we can just keep that up for the rest of the run, then I also don't have to worry too much. Because then it just becomes like, how many doors do I have to go through? Plus, we've gotten, we've gotten pretty lucky with the amount of health that we've gotten as well, anyway. We only have two floors left to go. There's a couple pins here. But yeah, perfection, if I can keep it, then it's pretty much a done deal because it's just gonna be so much good stuff right there. The secret room is not in an ideal place, but I can save myself one hit at least, so that is not too terrible, because I have to go through one less door. That's obviously pretty good, but I don't really have a way to get back there. But it might end up being okay if I take some weird routes through here. I'm not sure if I want to do that, though. But look at how much fire I'm creating. <laughs> it is a lot of flames, for sure. Am I even 
saving health? I think I am. I can use two bombs to save myself one hit. I don't think that's worth it right now. I think I'd rather have the availability of the potential of a shortcut rather than uh, save myself one hit of damage on this floor. Um, so this is kind of tempting because you can create uh, t like well, bridges effectively between rooms and that can be kind of useful if you want to go back and forth a bit. Especially if you have rooms with like the two red hearts that we've seen there, then it could be really good, but I think I'm not going to bother. I could also just blow up the shopkeeper here thinking about it, which I should have probably done a bit more throughout this run in general. Also, I, I'm, I'm assuming that this challenge is done on normal difficulty as well, because I, I feel like I'm just breezing through right now, which I'm not used to. <laughs> I feel like there is some things about hard difficulty that, do, that does make it harder, but simultaneously these flames are doing so much damage as well. Which is probably helping out quite a bit, so... All in all, who knows where the easiness of this challenge lays. I just realized that... Um, I was uh, missing a heart, so I used the thing there. Also realized that as such, by doing that I've effectively removed the ability to use shortcuts. This is not a room I love. Yeah, there you go. Doing that with low speed is rough and I don't care for it. But... Yeah, there you go. Unfortunately, that is actually pretty detrimental to our damage, so definitely unfortunate because those flames were doing a lot of the work. Ran into uh, an enemy that deals a full heart of damage as well, so really it's all falling apart uh, because this boss is probably one of the easiest to avoid. <laughs> but hopefully we're going to be okay. We only have one floor to go after this, so I'm hoping that it's going to be fine. Gish is once again guaranteed not to give us a health up, so I'm not loving that either. Um, but it's not the most tricky boss in the game, at least. He's gonna spawn some enemies there. Which is fine, because we're damage is okay. I wish he'd stop jumping around, though, because that is just going to spawn two more enemies every time. But that time, I shot a flame at him, so it worked out. Ended up exploding in his face when he shot against that flame as well, so that's pretty good. And the black creep doesn't really do anything, it just slows you down, so... So far, okay, but yeah, not ideal. Hopefully he's going to drop a red heart when he dies as well. Yes, hmm, rotten heart, not great. <laughs> uh, yeah, fair enough. I guess we're just going to have to go like this. We have two bombs again, so at least if there is a shortcut we can take, that'd be pretty good. Let's see what we got. Curse of the Cursed, obviously. Uh, not a shortcut we can... Oh, we can save ourselves one hit of damage. And there might be good stuff in here. There's a golden key, so I can, might as well just open up everything here. Just a large quantity of money from the look of things. And some health from a lock, which is unusual, but not impossible. But that does mean with the extra bombs that I've gotten as well that I can do that for free. Plus, with greed being here, I don't even have to have that second bomb either. So, all in all, not bad. Soul Heart is going to protect me from losing my Rotten Heart in the next door, so that's pretty good as well. Simply because it means that we're going to spawn a few more flies which might end up being useful. And even though we don't have perfection, the flames are being very good as well. The floor is pretty large. Um, we're going to lose like four hearts just by walking through doors, unfortunately, but... I mean, that's just the way it is. We can't really avoid that. But we will get some uses out of our Yum Heart as well. So it's not going to be as bad. Plus, some of these bosses are just dropping hearts left and right anyway. So that's working out rather well also. We can grab uh, some bombs here. Because we do still have that golden key. And we have no real use for our keys beyond that anyway. I could visit the item room, but I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth it. I'm not 100% sure, actually. Uh, we could just die in our sacrifice room as well, but I don't think that's worth it either. Um, but there is... Yeah, there's half a heart, but I can't get it, so that's kind of annoying. Yeah, I think... You know what? I'm just going to go for my item room. It's effectively just two extra hits, hopefully, provided I don't take a bunch of damage here. I should use my yum heart because we did just lose our rotten heart by going here. <laughs> Alright, well... 
Uh, am I gonna risk that? I mean, it is fun. I do like fun. Yeah, I do like- actually, it's not even risky because I have bomb immunity. Never mind, it's actually a good item now. It's just a free explosion that I can throw around, and that is going to deal a decent amount of extra damage, so... All in all, definitely not bad. Plus, it will also have the sad bomb properties, because we uh, picked that up earlier. So, all in all, actually, yeah, it's just really, really good. Plus, it allows me to get to this chest for free. And let's see if Greed is waiting for us in our shop. I'm not sure if we fought regular Greed yet. We fought Super Greed. But Greed decided not to show up today, so that is lovely. Uh, might as well just buy everything here. There could be some good cards. Lover's card, obviously very good. Several cards over there as well. What do we got? We got two Lover's cards, so we can at least use one of these with, uh, without really having to worry about that. So let's use one. We got Magician, we got Joker, Ace of Diamonds, Joker again, and Wheel of Fortune. Well, Joker's gonna take me to an Angel Room, guaranteed. That is the Star of Bethlehem once again. We've seen that in action before, so we know that that's pretty damn good. Uh, also, just a static damage up, but I think I'll go with the Star of Bethlehem, actually, because I think... It's gonna take a minute to reach its location, but its destination, rather, but I think it is going to end up being worthwhile. Uh, with that, though, I will take the lover's card that... I thought there were two lover's cards, but maybe I... I didn't look at that properly, I guess. That's on me. Oh well. That's ultimately fine as well. We have plenty of health to play with, so that is good. Just gonna go into my super secret room to waste some more time effectively. It's really the main thing. Mostly just waiting for um, that Star of Bethlehem to reach the boss room, because that's really where I mostly want it. Might as well try and overcharge my Yum Heart, so I can have two charges on that, so that Battery Beggar is pretty damn good as well. Couple pins here. No worries. Bob's Brain helping out a little bit there as well. And the use of the Yum Heart allows us to just uh, get through that rather quickly. Star of Bethlehem still on its way, but... In this room, we can just sit in the corner and wait. We can use the Ace of Diamonds in the big room. So that's probably going to clear out any danger right here. There we go. And that just leaves one more room before the boss, and we are pretty much at full health when we get there. So it really couldn't go much better than it currently is. I will actually just wait for the Star of Bethlehem before I go into the next room, because... I think it's going to be end up being rather useful. I'm shooting a lot of flames while inside here as well, possibly because of the very high tier rate, which I can appreciate. And before you know it, there you go. One enemy, we can deal with that with relative ease. And I will just wait for this star to slowly mosey along into the boss room. I don't know if I have to, but it makes me feel a little safer, I suppose. Let's just run in here. Yeah, I do think I would have to have waited and well, that went about as quick as it could have gone. <laughs> so all in all, no worries at all. That was the Cursed Challenge. We unlocked a credit card, which allows you to buy everything in a shop or a devil room for free. And that is obviously rather good. With that, we will now go to the Darkness Falls Challenge. Challenge number four. It will unlock the Degas rune at the end. And it, it's, it's just a build, really. Uh, we have to fight Satan as Eve. We get a gold bomb immediately at the start. And it's looking pretty good already. A, um, there's a red heart soul heart right there, which I don't love. If it was just a regular soul heart, then I could have gotten the Horror of Babylon effect. Actually, I can still get that if I... Um, basically just use the razor blade so I can just grab that without having to worry so that's actually good I have no time constraints so I will just take my time and make it as easy on myself as possible plus there is also the fact that we have infinite bombs because of that golden bomb we picked up so might as well blow up everything in the hope that we can get a black heart or something like that nothing but fair enough we can look for a secret room without having to worry about anything we can look for a super secret room without having to worry about anything. All in all, things are looking quite positive. There are shops in this challenge, which is good to know. Genuinely wasn't sure because I only know that this... I, I only know the unlock for this challenge. I don't actually know the exact details, but... 
Uh, I assume there's not going to be... Yeah, there's no item rooms, which is fair enough. I don't mind that too much. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do here. I'm thinking that I want to go into my curse room. Then take the rotten heart to heal up. Then take the red heart, soul heart thing so I can get one soul heart. Buy a soul heart from the shop as well. Yeah, I got some options. So things should be okay provided I don't take any damage in the curse room. Which is not guaranteed, but we'll see what we can do. Well, that's one way to not take too much damage in the curse room, I suppose. Getting one of the best items in the game. So ended up not losing any of my black hearts by leaving the room quickly enough, which is good. Uh, my super secret room could be in a variety of loca locations, but apparently it wasn't the first one we tried, so good. And that also takes care of that. We get a luck up. All in all, this is going about as peachy as it can be. This is health up, which I don't particularly love. But since that rotten heart is still here, it is not immediately a problem either. And we are in basement one with more than half of our possible health. So all in all looking pretty good. I could buy a key, which is a little tempting. But other than that, I'm not really too bothered. Uh, so let's go here. It's famine, so that's going to give us another orbital. And let's just use this thing twice to activate the Whore of Babylon. My damage is 10 right now, specifically for this room. It's going to lower the moment I go to the next room. But the dead bird and the large quantity of damage is going to make quick and easy work of the boss right here. Ball of Band-Aids is obviously not bad because it means we have some protection. And with that, let us go to the next floor. We do have to fight Satan, so we're going to be here for a little bit longer than the previous challenge. But simultaneously, our build is also a little bit stronger, I would argue. So hopefully that's going to work out. There is a Tinted Rock here and a Hierophant card that it briefly showed, and I, I read it in time this time. So we could just use a bomb to get that card. It's a little cheaty to know what the cards are, of course, but you know. I, I like the mod. <laughs> so, you know, fair enough. It's, uh, it's just going to have to be that way. Uh, not really anything I can do there. I can see if there's a bomb for sale, actually. There's Chaos, which... Uh, in, in a challenge like this with no item rooms, it doesn't really help out in any way. So I don't think I'm going to get that, unfortunately. Simultaneously, I'm a little curious about what could happen. So I'm just going to take it anyway. Uh... Ancient Recall, draw three cards, recall. one of which is Ancient Recall, uh, draw three cards. I can activate my space bar item for free, which I already do. Magician, Death, Moon. Moon could be good, because if I use Moon, then I don't have to worry about uh, having a bomb for the secret room. So I don't mind that. If there is a curse room on this floor, then yeah, then... I'll definitely just go in there and then moon card out, I'd say. Hagalaz might as well use that here, I reckon. And that trinket doesn't really bode well with this character specifically because I just don't love um, getting my red hearts back in a way I don't control. Simultaneously, it's probably not too bad, actually, thinking about it. Because you do have the situation where... I can just use the Razor Blade when I have Red Hearts available, so it's not immediately terrible. But fair enough. Let's just use Death here to make this a little bit easier on myself, and with that... Eh, let's just do that one room before we move on. If I get Flight, then I'll just get everything, I think. Apparently there was one more room as well, but yeah, with with Flight, I'll just, go, I'll just get that card. Without Flight, I feel like... Uh, I'd only pick up the card because I know what it is, and I kind of feel like I don't want to do that, so... For now, let's just leave that alone. Get one more bomb. And get this chest as well, with even more bombs inside. And uh, my super secret room is probably near the boss. I'll try and open this as well, for good measure. Couple of flies, not immediately terrible. Like, my super secret room could be here. It could also just be in a bad place. Okay, very good. Not bad. Um, can't really do much with these chests, unfortunately. Hanged man. Well, I did say what I said. 
And I might as well, I suppose. Uh, let's just do that. Get another key to open up another chest. Very good, very reasonable. The lucky Toe is not bad. I think it improves your drop somewhat. And I might actually go for that Eternal Heart as well, thinking about it. What was this Red Heart again? If it is just a full red heart, then I can use my razor blade against the boss as well, which will be pretty good, obviously. I'm keeping the Hierophant card specifically if my Devil Deal is just ludicrous, but then I can take Devil Deals for one heart at a time if they only cost soul hearts. It's kind of a weird situation, but we'll see how it works out. Uh, not sure if taking that Eternal Heart right now is a good idea, actually, because I'm not sure if I use my razor blade now, I'm going to lose my Eternal Heart. So instead, let's just play this somewhat safely. And see what is in our devil deal here. It is Infestation 2 and the Bot Fly, which uh, makes sense because I did pick up Chaos, I suppose. But I will. I mean, Infestation 2 is very good. Uh, Bot Fly is okay. Let's just take Devil Deals and move on. I think that's acceptable. This this run's going to be a little weird because I took. A Devil Deal and Chaos, I suppose, but simultaneously, it doesn't matter too much. I think we're still in a fine situation simply because, uh... We started off with a really strong build. That's just how simple it is. Like, this, this particular challenge, you just start off with so many good items that you can't really go wrong since we're only going to Satan anyway. So even if all else fails, we'll probably be okay. But there is a little bit more wackiness going on. We're at least going to get item room items now because we took chaos. So that can be kind of good. Uh, shops can be a little bit better as well. Because we, once again, can just get more or less anything. And hopefully that's going to end up being a couple good items as well. And potentially with the lucky toe, we could get some decent drops as well from... Here and there, we have a luck up as well, so if we get a luck-based item, that could be pretty good. We have a lot of options available, uh, depending on what we're going to get. And even if we get nothing, it's only Satan. Like, we're gonna be okay. Full health pill in my pill pool, not immediately terrible. Look at how many flies Infestation 2 is spawning as well, like, or spiders, rather. It's such a strong item, uh, and I will actually just lower my health to the Horror of Babylon because I'm... Getting tired of my movement speed. <laughs> but other than that, I think we'll be okay. There's two half a hearts on the floor right now, so that could end up being good. Uh, the bombs that spawned immediately die to the many spiders in the room, so that's also pretty nice. These spiders can't actually reach that enemy because he's all the way over there. We're gonna end up fighting the boss with a large quantity of spiders, but let's see. If we can find our secret room first, I think that's going to be worthwhile. Even though we are going to lose out on some of our spiders. Eh, I wouldn't mind blowing up a shopkeeper, so... Mm, do I risk this? I think I do not risk it. I was tempted to uh, get that golden chest, but I'd have to use my one last bomb, and I don't love that idea. Bombino with the tinted rock in the room, so that's about as good as it gets. Because he can just blow up the Tinted Rock after all. And then if he goes here, then he has a lot of spiders to deal with. So I'm not overly concerned by how this is going. Except for maybe the rocks falling down. And I did immediately get hit as I was saying that. So that adds up. Mom's bracelet, unfortunately. Um, actually that might work out. Because I think, I think I can grab spiky rocks with that. I cannot grab spiky rocks with that. Well, that's a good thing to know. But otherwise, you can grab a rock and either use the item again to just drop it on the floor below you. Or you can throw it, but then it has to recharge first. With this thing, you can actually like destroy mushrooms as well, which can be rather good. But I think I will just stick with the razor blade because I like being in the core of Babylon status. But I will just quickly look for my shop because I do still have two keys remaining. And I wouldn't mind seeing if we can get something a little bit better. Uh, we did get a second part of the mom transformation, but that's ultimately fairly irrelevant, I'd argue. Uh, I'll take the heart because we will still be in the Horror of Babylon range because we are Eve. And Eve doesn't need to be at half a heart, but at a full red heart, so that's working out as well. And that just leaves the shop over there. Hopefully it's going to be 
A nice one. We have a decent amount of money to work with as well, so that's pretty good. Now we'll actually just go to full health in case I want to use it. And that is that. I don't particularly care about this. I mean, it is a tier sub these days, but the Bible is more common. And, uh, well, the, mm, the Bible's not terrible, actually, in my current situation. And I don't actually hate the tears up. Actually, I guess I'll take it. Because while using the Bible on Satan isn't immediately a great idea, it is pretty useful against mom's foot and mom's heart. It does speed up those processes a bit. I do hope I can get rid of my remaining red heart containers before we have to use that, I guess. But... We're probably still going to get a couple devil deals anyway, so hopefully that's going to work out. Um, but we'll see what we can get. Um, if needed, I can just try to not pick up red hearts, I suppose, but it's not an ideal situation for sure. But our damage is still pretty good even when we don't have uh, Horror Babylon or the Razor Blade active, so it's not like it's a particular concern. I have a humongous amount of health to play with. Magician card... Don't really care about that without the Turbo Cloth, unfortunately, or just any item that particularly benefits from it. Like tech technology or any of those items, so I'd rather leave that alone. Like if I had Brimstone, obviously, then it would be pretty good, but as it stands, I'd rather not bother with it. I have three bombs, zero keys, so it is a little bit tempting to look for my secret rooms as well. And hopefully we can get some keys somewhere along the line. There's a couple places where my secret room could be, but it's actually here, so don't listen to me. <laughs> Let's just check out this room before I try, though, because I don't really have that many bombs to play with. I wouldn't mind a few more consumables, actually. I thought the lucky toe was meant to give me a few more consumables than usual. Also, the secret room wasn't there, which is sad, but not impossible to manage. I would like to find my secret room. It could be above this room as well. Um, it, can, it probably isn't anywhere else, but it kind of just depends on the rest of the floor as well, I suppose. Not sure what that bat is doing, but he's shooting randomly, which I didn't know bats did. I'm also getting just an absurd amount of trinkets this run and no keys, which is an interesting experience. We found our boss room. Uh, we have a 72% devil deal chance. I wouldn't mind blowing up a shopkeeper somewhere on this floor, just in case. And we do have a key to play with. We have seven coins, which is not a lot. Not really enough to uh, safely go into your um, shop for sure. I guess a secret room could also just be here, which wouldn't be the strangest thing in the world. But it, it, it very much has a possibility to be underneath the arcade room as well, which is awkward. At least the arcade room hopefully means there's a temperance machine in there, so I can at least get to 15 coins that way by just sacrificing all my red hearts. It means we don't really get a use out of our razor blade, I guess, but that's fine. And yeah, there's just a couple places where it very easily could be, the secret room, that is. So, that is a soul heart. I'm just gonna try this one first because it seems weird. Yeah, there you go. And not the best secret room in the world, but it does mean we can enter our arcade room without spending money, so I guess that's kind of okay. Wouldn't have minded to have one bomb remaining, though. <laughs> because that one bomb could be used to blow up the uh, battery beggar. Which, of course, means that um, we would get a little bit more Devil Deal chance as well, but simultaneously we just got so much money out of that machine that... Things are looking up in terms of getting some consumables from this guy right here. We at least got another couple of keys. We can play the machine a little bit longer here as well. The blood bag gives us a speed up, but I'm not sure if I want to have that. And Lord of the Fly, well, Scatoli rather, is not bad. Yeah, I'm not sure if I want to deal with this because the speed up's really good, but then I immediately picked it up without even giving it a second thought because I have the razor blade, so I'm not really too concerned about it either. I do hope we're gonna get a devil deal here though, but maybe if we get a bomb in our shop, then that will work out. That is a bomb. That is uh, <laughs> Brother Bobby, which sure, I guess. It is part of the conjoined transformation, and I am a big fan of the conjoined transformation, so let's just give that a shot. It's 
kind of unlikely that we're going to get conjoined with the lack of item rooms and only devil deals and chaos, but we might be able to make it work. Alright, so our devil deal chance is 95%. We cannot get it any higher than that to my knowledge unless there is something in the curse room here. And since there is a free soul heart waiting for us, I might as well at least try. And the health up pill is actually a little tempting to take into my devil deal because it does give you that red heart container, but simultaneously, I don't think we're going to lose four heart containers in my devil deal, so... Instead, I will just move on with what we have. If we can get flight, I'm going to destroy all those poops as well. And it is peep. I'm just going to use it three times, actually, why not? For the sake of getting as much extra damage with the Whore of Babylon as well. Trying to use the Sack Dagger as well, but it's a little fiddly when I spawn out of him, as you can see. But it ended up going pretty okay. That's Bobby Bomb. The Bone Heart, I'm not really interested in. That is the entire Bookworm transformation. It is also the Bible. So we can at least get to one Red Heart, which is good. I can use the Bible to get flight so I can safely get the How to Jump and the Book of Sins. Therefore acquiring the Bookworm Transformation. And I think I will stick with the Bible since we no longer have to deal with Red Hearts, arguably. Even though I think... I'm not sure if this gets rid of War of Babylon if I now take a Red Heart. I think it does. Yeah, it does. Okay, so probably want to get rid of that Bone Heart. It is going to ruin my Devil Deal chances a bit. Uh, we do have decent amounts of bookworm tears going on there. Not sure what that's all about, but sure, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully that's going to work out. But overall, I think my damage is entirely reasonable and manageable for sure. I will actually take all of this. I was hoping for something that's not terrible, but you know. You can't win them all when it comes to three red chests in the end. But occasionally you do get like a devil deal item. Health up is somewhat tempting. If only for the fact that it would allow us at least one more Devil Deal where we can just take everything more or less for free. But simultaneously. I don't feel confident that we're going to get a Devil Deal this floor. It's not impossible with 36%, well, 36 I guess, but the odds of it are just not very likely. So instead I will just move on. I think at this stage I'm also just a little tempted to just run to the end because I think my build is fully acceptable at this stage. I wouldn't mind a little bit more of the conjoined transformation, obviously. But the bookworm transformation alone always makes me feel comfortable enough in most instances. I'm not really even sure why, because um it's I mean it does it does add an extra tier so frequently, I guess. It's it's quite powerful. And I will actually take this. It will get rid of my Horror Babylon again, but I like the safety, because I think if I lose that Bone Heart, my Devil Deal chances just go to zero. With that, though, I think I will actually get rid of this Bone Heart after this floor. Or just use a Bad Trip Pill. Now we know it is there, and we don't have to worry about that anymore. So that's arguably good. <laughs> you can find a silver lining in it, at least, so... You know what, fair enough. My Super Secret Room could very well be here, and it is. And we get black sacks, which I haven't actually seen before, but... Yeah, they can contain a variety of things. They contain, like, a maximum of one heart, but they can contain hearts for one. So that those things are pretty good. Range down, Range down luck down, down. x-lax. A really good pill pool overall, I'd say. But let's just move on with what we have. Um, luck down is a little unfortunate. I'm not sure if that affects bookworm at all, but I wouldn't be overly surprised. Secret room surprisingly close next to each other. Could end up being good if there is a decent shop somewhere on this floor, I think. Yeah, this leads to our shop. That's not Leaf, just randomly hanging out. Might as well use the Bible here since... Uh, why not? We're not fighting uh, Mom's foot on this floor after all. So having a free Nod Leaf could, could be good. Could be good. Uh, that is another health up. The Sprinkler is uh, is an item. I don't really care too much about it. But I think I'll just ignore all of this. I don't think I want any of that, really. So with this, let's go into my curse room and get rid of my... Well, let's actually first just clear the floor. Then go to the curse room to get rid of my bone heart. And then uh, live happily ever after. Is my current strategy. 
Headless Horseman. Okay. I think this still guarantees to drop the horse, even though I I have Chaos. Because that's just one of those drops. Yeah. Horse, nah, horse is tempting, actually. I'm going to get rid of this. Um, it at least gives me a lot of flight to work with, which is obviously not bad. I'm not sure if it's better than the Bible, but it at least allows me to go in and out of my curse room for free, I believe. Because I think a thing I can do is just fly in there, like so, get the chest, and then use my active uh, use to get out of there. And that does give you free curse rooms that way. Which is not bad. Uh, I just don't know if I care. I, I don't know if I care at all. Because I do like the insta-kills. And it's not like my speed is particularly bad either. It didn't look like... I don't think my speed even goes up. So it's really just about the flight at that stage. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to bother with that. It's kind of nice that we got the Nod Leaf at least. Because with the sacrificial dagger i can just kill satan by standing still which is kind of good i guess sacrificial dagger plus also the uh, bandage ball as well a combination of those two like at least one of them is going to hit i can do this this over here as well like with this boss in particular i can just hang out and eventually he will just crawl towards me and stand next to me and then he'll just end up destroying himself with the orbitals in my possession so it is it's a good item it's one that you don't see too frequently anymore, but particularly with characters like the Lost or any any character that just struggles with anything really, it does become very powerful. So in this run, I don't mind it. Probably not going to use it too much if I can avoid it because it, standing still for long periods of time and watching as enemies die, as fun as it is, it's not that interesting. <laughs> so if I can avoid it, I probably will. But it's nice to have the option available. It more or less guarantees the victory in the end because. If all else fails, I can just enter a room, stop moving, and just wait for the room to clear itself, which is going to work in most instances. Except for something like this, where the enemies do not move, obviously, but that was what you get when trying to use a room as an example. The, the game knows these things. But had I done that properly there, I was trying, <laughs> then the poops would have run into me. And it would have worked out rather well. I'm going to skip this curse room because I don't know how many rooms we have left. But we have uncovered quite a lot of this floor already. So I'm a little bit concerned. Simultaneously, I'm seeing a lot of rooms still remaining here as I am progressing. But you know what? That's just the life of trying not to use the Bible, I suppose. If there's a battery in my shop, I'm actually... I'll probably just fly into my curse room, actually. And maybe I'll look for the secret room as well, just for good measure. Because I do have a large quantity of bombs available. But overall, it doesn't really matter. Seven sins is not too bad. Might as well take that. There is a battery in my shop. So let's do the aforementioned thing and fly into the curse room. It does end up saving half a heart in the end. Sure, that's not terrible either. I think that item still works even when you have the Nod Leaf active, but I'm not a hundred percent sure about that and I kind of want to try it out. So I might do that in a second. I have no idea where my secret room is. I have a couple hunches, but none of them are really panning out in terms of viable locations, unfortunately, either by holes in the floor or stuff like that. No super secret room there either. Yeah, I mean, it could be like next to the shop or something like that. There's a couple places where it theoretically still could be. But it's not, yeah, it's not an ideal one for sure. Like, I'm gonna try, like, these places. And maybe I'm missing something on the map as well, but I don't want to spend any more time on it. So instead, let's see if we can beat Mom's foot over here. Dealing a decent amount of damage there. Also, I forgot to buy that battery, uh, as you can see, because I'm now fighting Mom's foot regularly instead of using the Bible, which... It's specifically the reason why I uh, brought the Bible to begin with. But potentially I can choose not to mess that up when we are going to the mom's heart floor. So it can still work out. We uh, at least no longer have the risk to get to um, no Whore of Babylon status. So that's pretty good. We have two parts of the conjoined transformation and a Curse of the Lost to play with. 
So this looks like it's going to be a long floor for sure, but not one that's immediately impossible. And that is the preferable way to live life. We are 23 minutes into this run. It's not the quickest run in the world, but I have been more or less full clearing every floor. Just for the sake of trying to make this build work as much as possible. But to be fair, I probably didn't need to. So I could bomb my way in here. I could also just use the Bible. I'm not sure if we have anything good in our pill pool. Pretty fly. That's the uh, orbitals taken care of. Infested. Range down, range down, range down. And x lax. A classic combination of pills, but I'm just going to leave the remaining ones alone, I think. And progress through the floors. Our health is pretty good, so I'm not really looking for tinted rocks right now. Not actively, at least. If I happen to see one, I'll grab it, grab it obviously. But I'll just leave that alone. Probably not going to look for my secret room either, because it's just not very fun when you don't have a map because it makes it very, very difficult, and it gives it a lot of options. If there's rooms that look like they could contain a secret room, I'll try to bomb the wall, but other than that, I will just leave that alone. This is a really big floor, and the Blackheart destroyed everyone. That's just an empty room, apparently, which is fair enough. And with that, onwards and upwards. There's a lot of big rooms on this floor, which is interesting. Also makes it even more difficult to try and find your secret room because it can make for rather fiddly locations, but fair enough. Let's just bomb our way into that golden chest right there. For very little, we I think we ended up with one, uh, one coin <laughs> out, out of that. We uh, spent one key and one bomb and we got both of those back from that golden chest with one extra consumable. Random soul heart out of nowhere, so that's pretty good. If you manage to walk to the left in that room, then you are pretty much good to go. And with that, let's just try this once. And with that, let's go fight Blastasis. Where I will stand here and watch how everyone gets destroyed by my many orbitals. A very safe method of dealing with this boss indeed. And we get infestation at the end there. So we have both flies when we take damage and spiders when we kill enemies. So all in all, looking pretty good. Curse of the Blind. I'm not sure if this is going to stop me from getting any devil deals, but it might. Because uh, it just doesn't seem like a good idea to waste all my health on it. But simultaneously, it can be fun as well. So we'll see what kind of fantastic choices we're going to be making today. I'm not sure if there's anything worth grabbing here, but I did just take some damage, so I probably should have uh, ultimately used the Bible there to make sure I not take damage from creep on the floor that I didn't pay attention to. And with that extra damage, I'm starting to think that maybe <laughs> I shouldn't just take random devil deals in the hope that they are good, uh, because they could very easily just end my run as well, and that's probably not going to be worthwhile. So instead, let's just move on, maybe find a super secret room over here, and indeed we do. Not the best, I mean we could spend a couple bombs on him, but not preferable. Uh, we are in time for Hush, which actually opens up in this challenge, but again, probably not preferable, and didn't get a devil deal, so we can't even play around with that. Uh, which is unfortunate, but I'll learn to live with it, I'm sure. Kill these enemies first. I do need to, I think, make sure not to use the Bible against Satan because I'm not sure if it's an insta death, but I'm fairly sure it is. So I'd rather not insta die. I, I might use the Bible just before even entering the room, just in case. Just to make life a little bit safer. But oh well. well. We'll see what happens. For now, we still have the worry of actually making it to the fight after all. And it can very much go wrong. I, I genuinely thought this was an ally for some reason that was shooting triple tears at me, but fortunately one of the orbitals stopped the attack, so that's good. Yep, very good. I'm actually just going to use the Hierophant card because I don't really see a use for that anymore. This is a nasty room. Why are the rocks so close to the door? That's really mean. But fair enough, I guess. Hadn't seen that room before, I don't think. That's actually really mean. <laughs> Because that that can so easily just take, do a heart of damage without you really being able to control that very well. I mean, obviously, it's all just movement based, but still, it's not nice. Not nice at all. A couple of enemies here that are being dealt with thanks to war. 
which is a classic war situation. Probably could have just used the Bible to fly out of that room there, but might actually do it on the way back since this is a dead end. Not a super secret room either. But I do like having the Bible available for such things, and we did end up using it just before the Satan boss fight, albeit by accident. And again, uh, this is not the most difficult boss fight with literal immunity to damage, so even though I said I wasn't going to do it, I do kind of like doing it from time to time. You never really get a chance to use the Gnawed Leaf, it doesn't show up that frequently, but when it does... It is important to note how strong this thing actually is, especially in this fight, because look at that. Didn't even have to move for the trophy, <laughs> and we unlock the Rune of Degas. So that is another two challenges done. We're making some decent progress in the challenge uh, front at least, so that's looking alright. Still a lot left to do in terms of the non-rebirth challenges, I suppose, but we're making progress. Either way, I'm going to end it there, so I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Next time we play... I'll do another one as another character, and I hope to see you all there. Bye-bye.